On December 25, 2021, a space telescope named after the second administrator of NASA, James Edwin Webb, left Earth on an Ariane 5 rocket from Europe's spaceport in French Guiana on the northern coast of South America. On the 24th of January 2022, it arrived at its destination, 1.5 million kilometers away from Earth, into the second Sun-Earth Lagrange point. One of the five places where a small object can orbit the Sun along with the Earth. Webb weighs around 6,000 kilograms and is 8 meters tall and as wide as a tennis court. Although being larger than the Hubble telescope, it is lighter, sensitive, and more proficient than the Hubble. Usually, telescopes are placed in domes or tubes to cover the instrument from observation noises. But Webb is open to space to keep it at an optimal cold temperature. This open design has to be folded before fitting inside the rocket, then to be unfolded in space while arriving at its destination. This is the first time NASA has attempted a complex sequence of unfolding in space. Unlike the Hubble telescope, Webb is not designed to be serviced since its mission location is beyond the moon. So every critical system in Webb contains a copy to ensure the mission will be carried out safely and correctly. Webb is powered by an array of solar panels, which feeds its systems with a 2000 watt power input. Webb has two sides, separated by five layers of heat insulators made of a material named Captain and coated with aluminum and silicon. All five layers, individually, are thinner than a hair but resistant to tearing to keep its infrastructure intact in case of a micrometeoroid hit. Two sides have opposing temperatures. A freezing cold side and a boiling hot side. The hot side is exposed to a temperature closer to the boiling point of water, while the cold side is cool enough to freeze air. On the hot side is where its computer parts, maneuvering mechanisms, and the high gain antenna are located. The observation instruments are placed on the cold side to keep them in optimal working condition. Since the observer uses infrared waves to capture the information, it's crucial to keep the instruments at a lower temperature. Webb sees the universe with four instruments, each specially designed to capture specific infrared wave ranges. A near-infrared camera. A near-infrared spectrograph. Mid-infrared instrument. A near-infrared imager and slitless spectrograph. You may not know what near and mid-infrared waves are. So let me explain it to you. This is the electromagnetic wave spectrum. Waves to the left side of this spectrum have shorter wavelengths compared to the waves on the right side. The infrared wave range starts right next to the visible red light wave, which has the longest wavelength of all visible light. So by taking red light waves as a starting position, infrared waves are categorized as near, mid, and long. Waves near the red light are called near-infrared. You get the rest. Now, back to the topic. The near-infrared camera is the primary camera of Webb and captures near-infrared waves. This camera is mainly used to observe exoplanets, planets that are out of solar systems, young stars in our galaxy, and distant objects in our solar system, like the Kuiper Belt. Also to capture the light emitted from the earliest galaxies in forming. This camera is equipped with coronagraph and time series imaging capabilities. A coronagraph is a device used to block the glare of bright objects, to allow the clear observation of its surrounding objects, like planets orbiting stars. A distant star is orbited by two planets. One looks similar to the Earth, the other is a gas giant. When viewed from a distance, the two planets disappear into the glare of their sun. How could we ever find these planets all the way from the Earth? By using a space telescope with a coronagraph to separate starlight from planet light. As the star's light passes through the telescope's large mirrors, it picks up small distortions. Diffraction adds concentric rings to the image we see. To reveal the planets, first a chronograph uses a mask to block much of the star's light and redirect the remaining light to the outer edges. A washer-shaped device can now block most of the rest of the star's light. Because the planet's light comes in at an angle, it misses the mask and passes through the center of the washer. But when we turn up the image signal by collecting more light, we can see that the planets are still hidden under blobs of leftover starlight. To remove these blobs, the chronograph has a special deformable mirror that can change shape by using hundreds of tiny pistons. 
This can correct distortions in the light beam. As the mirror deforms, the blobs of light as seen in the monitor slowly begin disappearing, finally revealing the brighter of the two planets. Afterwards, the fainter planet also comes into view. We can now see objects more than a billion times fainter than the star. And if the light from these planets is passed through a prism, we can spread it out into rainbows of color. But some colors are missing. They were absorbed by gases in each planet's atmosphere, giving us important clues about their composition. The search for life in the universe has taken a new step Stars. forward. Near-infrared spectrograph detects near-infrared waves. A spectrograph is used to break the light into its component colors. Webb's This Eye is equipped with a micro-shutter array made of silicon nitride wafers. This allows the spectrograph to observe 100 objects at the same time, excluding other objects from the view. A micro-shutter array is a novel device containing 280,000 micro-shutters packaged in four stamp-size metal boxes. Each of these boxes contains 62,000 micro-shutters, each 100 microns long and 200 microns wide. For comparison, human hair is 75 microns wide. With the help of this micro-shutter array, the near-infrared spectrograph can detect forming stars and the chemical composition of young galaxies light years away from us. The next is the mid-infrared instrument, or MIRI, with a camera and a spectrograph. Also equipped with a coronagraph, Webb relies on this device to see cooler objects like debris disks and faraway galaxies. The fine guidance sensor and the near-infrared imager and slitless spectrograph are packaged into one unit. Fine guidance sensors act as a compass for the telescope and help to point the observatory in a specific direction. The near-infrared imager and slitless spectrograph or NIRISS have the unique ability to capture higher resolution images of bright objects. All these devices need to gather an extensive amount of infrared data to get a clear picture of what it's looking at. So a large mirror is a critical part of infrared sensitive telescopes, since the wavelengths are longer than the visible light. The size of the mirror falls directly in line with the telescope's resolution. The bigger the mirror, the higher the quality of the images. Webb's mirror is an assembly of 18 hexagon-shaped mirror segments made of beryllium. Beryllium has higher strength, low density, and resistant to extremely low temperatures than glass, and is extremely rigid and has a very low thermal expansion. But beryllium does not reflect infrared waves very well. To handle the issue, each of the 18 hexagons is vacuum vapor coated with a roughly 100 nanometers thick gold layer because of gold's higher reflectivity than other materials at infrared wavelengths. This helps Webb to see the objects far, far away from it. When fully unfolded, the mirror has a diameter of 6.6 .6 meters covering 25 square meters of area, and the complete mirror weighs roughly 705 kilograms. Before anything else, let's see why Webb uses infrared waves instead of visible light waves to look at the abyss. As explained before, visible light waves have relatively shorter and tighter wavelengths that are prone to bounce off surfaces easily, making it much harder for light waves to penetrate through clouds of gas and dust. But infrared waves have longer wavelengths and make their way through objects easily in their direction. These infrared waves hold many clues to mysteries from the beginning of everything after the Big Bang. This quality of infrared waves allows Webb to see the objects behind nebulas and dusty clouds. But why are there infrared waves in space? Let me explain something to clear that up. 13.8 billion years ago, our universe was created with the Big Bang. Since then, the universe kept expanding its size with time. This expansion caused the light waves to stretch and transform into infrared waves with longer wavelengths. This process is known as the cosmological redshift. This is the reason there are infrared waves in space. The Webb telescope is specially designed to observe these waves, which come from distant objects billions of light years away, even before the beginning of the Earth. Light takes time to travel through space, leaving a delay between the event and when we see it. Our moon is 390,000 kilometers away from us and light travels 300,000 kilometers per second. When we look above at the sky, we see the moon as it was 1.3 seconds ago. If we can see Neptune with our eyes like the moon, 
we see Neptune as it was four hours ago. Because Neptune is four light hours away from us. If we were to live in the Virgo galaxy cluster, and had a telescope powerful enough to see the Earth, we could see the dinosaurs that lived on Earth 60 million years ago. Because the light takes 60 million years to reach the Virgo cluster from the Earth. In space, even the light itself becomes as slow as a snail. Because of this, we can observe the things that happened billions of years ago, before there were any humans or the Earth. With the Hubble telescope, we could only see 500 million years back to the past since the Big Bang. With the help of Webb, now we see back in time to the past, 400 million years after the Big Bang. Webb has four imaging modes allowing it to capture highly detailed data of the space. Its standard imaging is equivalent to basic digital photography. Coronagraphic imaging mode allows it to capture faint objects near bright objects. Aperture mask interferometry mode can filter out objects and focus on particular objects. Time series imaging involves capturing a series of images as the burst mode of a regular camera to track the motion of objects. The mission just started and it's already unraveling some of the mysteries we couldn't figure out with the Hubble telescope, and the hidden details of what we have already seen. With the coming years we may find how the universe started, or how the galaxies, planets, and stars came to be. Who knows what it will discover over the years.